Hi everyone, my name is Monique, and today I'm going to be showing you how to play a game that is currently on Kickstarter called Undergrove. In Undergrove, players play as mature Douglas fir trees that are trying to utilize their symbiotic relationships with fungi in order to grow their seedlings into trees. Players will need to plant their seedlings in strategic locations around the forest and take advantage of the surrounding mushrooms and their activation abilities in order to win. This is a game for one to four players designed by Elizabeth Hargrave and Mark Wooten, fully illustrated by Beth Sobel and published by AEG who are helping sponsor this video. Now, before we begin, I do need to mention that everything that you see here is considered a prototype copy of the game, which means things are subject to change in the future. For more information regarding the game, as well as the campaign, I've included a link to their campaign in the description below. Last but not least, if you enjoy content like this and would like to see more in the future, please consider subscribing. And with that, we are ready to begin. So if you'd please direct your attention to the center of the table, we're all set up here for a two player game of Undergrove. Welcome to the Pacific Northwest. Now, just to kind of give you the lay of the land, in the middle here, we have our forest. And as you can see, we already have some fungi centered around it. And these are actually the starting tiles that you'll be using in every game. They're labeled uh, Central, North, East, South, and West. Each player is also given a player board, which represents you as a Douglas fir tree, as you can see. In addition, it's also used to store your resources, your four different activation tokens, and it also lays out all the five different types of actions that you can take. Players will also have seedlings, roots, and trees in their supply, as well as a starting hand of three mushroom tiles. We also have the carbon track, which will give players bonuses and determines the timing of the game, as well as three different public goal cards, which will change from game to game. And so the way that the game works is players are going to be taking turns, taking one action each until the game ends. And these actions represent the various aspects of the symbiotic relationship that occurs between trees and fungi. Now, before we talk about the actions, let's just take a look at the anatomy of a mushroom tile. Each mushroom in the game comes in one of four types based off of their physical characteristics, and they're distinguished by both a color as well as a symbol. In addition, each mushroom tile has an activation cost as well as an ability that players can utilize throughout the game, and they're potentially worth a certain number of points shown at the bottom for each player that has a root on it at the end of the game. Now, during setup, players will start the game with one seedling as well as one root, specifically surrounding this earth lover tile. Because we're set up for a two player game, we also have unused neutral player colors on the other corners of the tile. And so over the course of the game, players will have the opportunity to add more roots to their existing seedlings and add additional seedlings to various areas of the forest. These roots will eventually need to absorb carbon, which is represented by these black tokens, and at the end of the game, you'll only be able to score a number of mushroom tiles that have your roots on them equal to the number of carbon tokens that are on that specific seedling. And so in this example, if the game were to end right now, even though I have two roots that are pointing at different mushroom tiles, I would only be able to score one of them because I only have one carbon token on this seedling. And that is the basic concept of what players are gonna be doing in this game. We're going to be growing more seedlings and attaching roots to them and absorbing carbon in order to score the maximum number of mushroom tiles at the end of the game. And so like I was mentioning, players will be taking turns, taking one action each until the end of the game has been triggered. In this game, there are five different types of actions that you can take and they're all represented on your player board. And so let's just go ahead and start with the middle two actions since they are very similar called reproduce and partner. The costs associated with taking any of these actions are always found on the left hand side of the action. In this game, there are four different types of resources. There's carbon, which is represented by these black cylindrical tokens, as well as orange phosphorus, purple potassium, and blue nitrogen. Now, in order to take the reproduce action, you have to first spend one carbon as well as two phosphorus, and any resources spent get spent into the supply. There is one exception for that, but we'll be discussing that later. Now, in addition to the main action, there's also an optional action in the light brown shaded area, which allows you to place out a mushroom tile by paying one of the three colored resources. And so let's just say I spent a nitrogen to take this optional action. When placing out mushroom tiles, the only real rule is you have to place it orthogonally adjacent to one of the mushrooms that are already in the forest. And now that I'm done taking the optional action, I can now take the main action, which is adding a seedling 
seedling and a root. Seedlings are placed at the corner intersections of tiles, and only one player's seedling can be placed at each intersection. And roots must be placed attached to the seedling that you just added, pointing to either of the mushroom tiles that it's adjacent to. And so now that I have a root pointing to this mushroom tile, I'll have access to its activation ability, and I'll potentially be able to score the two points that it's worth at the end of the game. And just as a note, even though I added this mushroom tile as my optional action, I'm not actually required to place my seedling token next to it. I could have placed my seedling in any other available corner of the forest. The next type of action is called partner, and similar to the reproduce action, you also have to spend one carbon. But instead of phosphorus, you have to spend two potassium. The partner action also provides the same optional action that allows you to discard a resource in order to add a new mushroom tile to the forest, but the difference is instead of adding a seedling and a root, you'll be adding two new roots to existing seedlings. These roots can be added to the same seedling or to two different seedlings. And this will be based off of which mushroom tiles you want to have access to, as well as which ones have carbon that your seedlings can absorb. Now that we've added a few roots, let's talk about the next type of action, which is called activate. Taking this action allows you to activate a mushroom tile that has one of your roots on it. Now in order to activate a mushroom tile, you must first pay its cost, which is typically going to be a certain combination of resources, typically carbon, as well as exhausting one of your four activation tokens. In this example, I have a root token on the red cracking bolete, and so in order to activate it, I have to first exhaust my porous activation token by flipping it over to its exhausted side. In addition, I have to spend one carbon token, and any carbon spent this way goes on the actual mushroom tile. And now that I paid the cost, I now gain the ability, which is gaining me a nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus from the supply. Now it's important to note that when taking this action, you can only activate at most one mushroom tile, and there are a wide variety of mushroom abilities that you'll see in the game. And so this is a strategic element of the game that requires you to be strategic in order to be efficient and ultimately succeed. An example of how you can be efficient in this game is on a future turn, if I were to choose the activate action again, I actually would not be able to activate this mushroom tile because it requires me to exhaust this same activation token that I've already exhausted. Instead, I can activate this mushroom tile since I have one of my root tokens on it. I would be required to exhaust the blue activation token and spend a carbon, placing it on the mushroom tile itself, and its ability gains me one phosphorus and one nitrogen and the ability to exhaust the green activation token, which would allow me to activate either one of these two mushroom tiles again on a future turn, assuming I had the carbon necessary to do so. Other mushroom abilities that you'll see include mushroom tiles that allow you to unexhaust other activation tokens and take another action. Some tiles give you resources, but also give your opponents a resource. Some tiles provide a variable number of points, depending on the number of resources at the end of the game. Some provide ongoing abilities. And some mushroom tiles allow you to absorb additional carbon, which is our next type of action. Taking the absorb action does not require you to spend carbon. Instead, you must first exhaust one of your four available activation tokens and spend one of your resource cubes. Then you absorb one carbon through one of your roots. And so if I were to take this action, I could choose this root and absorb one carbon onto the seedling. Now that I have one carbon token on the seedling, at the end of the game, I'll be able to choose to score for one of my root tokens on it. If on a future turn, I choose to absorb again using this root, then at the end of the game, I'll be able to score for both. The absorb action also has an optional ability that allows you to move carbon around the forest. But when taking the optional action, you have to spend a cubed resource for each tile that you move the carbon to. And carbon can only move orthogonally. So on a future turn, if I wanted to absorb with either of these roots again, I would have to first move a carbon to either one of those tiles. So I could move this carbon to the middle tile by spending a nitrogen if I wanted to. And at that point, I could absorb using this root. Now, one thing to note is as soon as you have three three carbon tokens on one seedling, and you take the absorb action again, the carbon automatically turns into a tree. Players only have at most four trees at their disposal, and at the end of the game, you'll be able to score all four roots for each seedling that has a tree on it. So you'll want to be strategic about which seedlings you turn into trees. The last type of action is called photosynthesize, and this action essentially allows you to gain more carbon and refresh your hand. When taking this action, you first gain two carbon from the supply. In addition, you can spend one nitrogen for each additional carbon token you'd like to gain. 
Then you refresh all of your activation tokens, and you can discard any number of mushroom tiles from your hand to redraw that many from the supply. And that's essentially it. Those are the five different types of actions that you'll be taking in the game. After performing your action, if at any point during your turn, one of your seedlings was able to absorb one or more carbon, then you progress up the carbon track. Each space provides you some sort of bonus, whether it's a specific type of resource or an additional route, or in the case of the spaces that have bonus tiles on them, you can flip through the bonus tiles and take the one that you'd like. Most provide you with resources, but some provide end game scoring points. Each game, you'll also play with three different public goal cards. As an example, this goal card scores you a certain number of points depending on the number of trees you've made, up to six points for four trees. And so at this point in your turn, if you furthered any of these objectives, then you would track them appropriately. Some objectives are friendly, and some are more competitive that require you to have the most of something by the end of the game. And afterwards, you always end your turn by drawing back up to a hand of three mushroom tiles. As soon as a player has reached the end of the carbon track and needs to progress again, then that player gets to choose one of the five available bonuses, and that triggers the end of the game. At that point, you finish out the round so that players have had an equal number of turns, and you can tell this because the first player has the first player marker. Each player gets one more turn, and then you go into final scoring. At the end of the game, players will score points for each of their seedlings with carbon tokens and trees on them. They'll score points for the three public goals, and finally, they'll score one point for every two two leftover resources. And at that point, whoever has the most points wins. And that is essentially how you play Undergrove. Now again, this game is currently on Kickstarter. So for more information regarding the game, as well as its micro expansion and the campaign, I encourage you to check out the link, which is included in the description below. And if you have any questions about anything that you saw here today, please feel free to leave me a comment down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Otherwise, thank you all so much for watching the video. I really hope it was helpful. If you enjoy content like this and would like to see more in the future, please consider subscribing. Thank you. Bye.